So you are probably here because you're interested in learning some steps you can follow uh, to take better photos of your dog. And that's great because I'm here to tell you how. Let's dive right in. I started out doing photography around the same time I got my dog, roughly six years ago. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing a couple of handy tips that I've picked up along the way and that can be super impactful for anyone who wishes to improve their pet photography. Now, photography is an art form, so it's highly subjective what you like in an image versus what you don't like. And I'm not really here to bash anyone's photography. If you like shooting your dog top down, on the leash, on whatever aperture, that's 100% fine. I'm just here to share with you guys some things that I feel have made a change in my dog photography and has really helped push my career as a dog photographer. So tip number one is going to be light source and in this particular scene I have a beautiful backlight so I'm going to put Kiva somewhere over here while I put myself over here somewhere and shoot towards the light uh, in direct light so to speak. And we hopefully, with the 85 millimeter that I'll be using, get a beautiful backlit scene and give him sort of an angelic halo. So here's another example of a beautiful scene using the natural spotlight of the woods. We have a beautiful mysterious black log uh, behind me and you have the branches sort of leading in towards the middle so i'm going to be placing kiva somewhere in here where well just until about a second ago we had this beautiful bright uh, spotlight so hopefully that will turn into a beautiful image Number two is going to be perspective and again while I'm not here to bash anyone's style of photography I think we can all agree that shooting your pet top down every single time is a little bit limited. My personal preference is getting on the eye level of the pet that you're shooting which usually in my case means getting on my knees sometimes even my elbows sometimes even my stomach just to get a nicer perspective when I shoot my dog. Now, obviously it depends a lot on what you're shooting and in which context and what setting and so on you're shooting. I usually find that shooting from my dog's perspective usually allows uh, for a slightly more submersive feeling for the viewer because you find yourself in the visual world of the pet that you're shooting. Isn't that clever? Super philosophy. It up. Third and final tip of this video is another highly subjective one, but I prefer to have my dog look away from the camera rather than looking straight into the camera. Again, this is something that I do to help make the image slightly more immersive because if the animal is looking, it, animal in this case, the dog is looking straight into the camera you're always aware of the camera's presence. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you were able to take something away from it, no matter how small. Well, if you did, uh, or if you didn't for that matter feel free to leave a comment down below on what you would like to see in my future videos and as always like the video and please subscribe to our channel to help us grow and I'll definitely see you in the next video. Peace.